School District of the Future prepares lifelong learners to demonstrate mastery of 21st century competencies that will equip them for continuous success. The Cab County School District is a leader in K-12 and early childhood education and has developed a comprehensive master plan to ensure school improvements are made throughout the DCSD community. Students can reach their fullest potential and excel when schools are well maintained and capital resources are up to date. Whether it's state-of-the-art learning spaces, our seven robotic programs, renovated and innovative schools, or technology devices for every child, these resources and investments not only benefit the DCSD community, but also the taxpayers of DeKalb County. A top priority for DCSD is supporting social and emotional skills of young learners and their families and our Early Learning Center addresses the readiness gap. Every five years, we assess DCSD schools and facilities, technology equipment, and examine construction to address overcrowding and to accommodate growth so that DCSD scholars can thrive. To achieve and excel, we provide technology at your fingertips with anytime, anywhere access, infrastructure enhancements, business system integration, and instructional tools to support top of the line connectivity and cybersecurity, and a family impact hub that meets diverse families where they are. So, how do we pay for these general improvements to impact student achievement and positively affect the DCSD community? East Blast is a one penny sales tax that allows school districts to fund their capital improvements. The voters of DeKalb County will be asked to extend the one penny sales tax for another five years. This education special purpose local option sales tax is critical to building our children's future and equipping our community for success. Good evening, everyone. Um, it is now 6.03 and we are going, I am calling this meeting for February 22nd, 2023 to order. Uh, the second item, or the first item on our agenda is welcoming all of our visitors. And I think that we have about two or three that I can see in the, yeah, we have three. So we want to welcome all of our visitors. And next on our agenda is item number two, review and approval of the February 22nd, 2023 meeting agenda. Are there any additions or corrections to the agenda as distributed? All right, hearing none, can we by unanimous consent, if there are no objections, agree to the agenda as distributed for February 22nd, 2023. Okay, hearing no objections, the meeting agenda is approved as distributed. Number three, review and approval of meeting minutes from January 25th, 2023. Are there any corrections to the meeting minutes as distributed? All right, hearing none, can we, if there are no objections by unanimous consent, agree to the minutes as distributed for January 25th, 2023? 
All right, hearing none, the meeting minutes for January 2020, excuse me, January 25th, 2023 have been approved as distributed. Number four, item number four on our agenda, 4A. All right, we had two items uh, that were um, taken to the board, two splossed items. The first one was professional architectural and engineering services for Dresden Elementary School replacement project. That went to uh, BRPH Architects and Engineers Incorporated uh, for a fee of $2,280,000. The second item was to close out of uh, certain projects, Henderson Mill Elementary School and Southwest DeKalb High School. Uh, this is the closeout document that needs to go to the board so we can get our final 10%. Um, I believe it's, well, in most cases, I'll say uh, it might not be true in here, but uh, typically uh, when you uh, submit documents throughout the construction of a project, uh, they will pay uh, everything up to 90% uh, for the reimbursements. And then uh, that last 10%, you don't get that reimbursement amount until after you submitted this closeout document. So uh, it's called the Certificate of the Board of Education so uh, those were approved. Uh, so we'll get a reimbursement of $96,124 for Henderson Mill and $554,284 for Southwest Camp High School. So those were the two SPLOST items presented uh, at the February meeting. You want to move on to number five or see yeah, if there are questions? On. Any okay. questions for? For Richard. All right. All right. So the one item then, uh, one of those two items uh, was actually a contract, and that was in the uh, the packet that we um, sent out. Uh, it was a contract for architectural and engineering engineering services. Went to BRPH Architects. Um, you see the in the spreadsheet that was sent out, the budgeted value was 3.1 million. The contract amount is 2.28 uh, million, and that's for the uh, design of a new Dresden Elementary School. And that is it for for five. All right. Any questions in regards to the contract award presentation? All right, move right along to review of community feedback, Daniel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we had a uh, we had uh, we received a couple of items uh, since the last meeting. Uh, one was uh, in regards to uh, East Plus uh, five projects from January twenty twenty three. Uh, current finish dates discussed uh, during last month's meeting. And let's see. The gist was, let's see. The MSR review did not include an executive summary of recent activity. Um, just discussion of um, East Blast five projects at 21 schools have a current finish date of January 2023. Uh, let's see. So, and I believe Richard, you uh, replied to that um, to that particular email. I believe that uh, was sent to another email address. Uh, okay. So, but I, I know. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can pull up your response. Okay, okay. I guess I don't have that response. So. All right, yeah, I will, I'll look for those. I thought I had, um, 
call all the emails, but I'll did that come into the um the East Blast? Yes, it was the sent. East Blast yeah, email? it was it came out to the um the AOL address on January twenty oh. eighth. Uh let's see. Could you forward that one to me? Because I don't think I actually Okay. My apologies to me. Let me forward that to you now. I thought it let's see. Madam Chair, will include you as well. Okay. All right. That has been sent. And the other email item was meeting practices. And Madam Chair, you did uh, respond to that email. Yes. And then there was one this afternoon uh, that I believe was just sent in. Uh, let's see. Or maybe it was earlier today. Oh, uh, let's uh, see. Actually, yeah. No, th that was actually one that came to me uh, okay. about a uh, incorrect project number, and we're going to get that fixed for the uh, for the next MSR. Okay. All right. Yeah, uh, those are all the emails um, that I have um, for, you know, from the uh, current inbox, Madam Chair and committee. All right, thank you very much, Daniel. Any questions in regards to the community um, feedback for the email received? All right, uh, move right along. And that's our review, Mel. Thank you, Kathy. Good evening, folks. Um, we'll do our normal page turn for the MSR, and please feel free to up and ask questions along the way if you care to. Hey, Mel, before you get started, one quick question. Yes, thank you. Um, did you have a, a summary this month? Because I didn't see it. Yes, ma'am. I transmitted it yesterday. Uh, okay. Daniel then. did send the thank you or acknowledgement, okay. I believe. Okay, let me let me look for it then. Thank you. Welcome. Um, I seem to be having a little bit of trouble with the navigation here, so I'm going to try it the old-fashioned way. Starting with our funding on table one, no change for East Bloss for tax funding, of course. And we do have GISFIC, GADOE, but GISFIC reimbursements in January. $85,511.60 for Henderson Mill Elementary, uh, Project 41534. And that GISFIC total now is approximately $84.6 million. We're charging $84,574,088. $880.62 to be exact. In terms of table two, SPLOS 5 funding, obviously, uh, we're complete with our SPLOS 5 funding cycle. Total tax, total revenue received, 772.9 million. Of that, 616.8 million, you can see, collected in SPLOS, East SPLOS tax receipts. And that's a healthy 130% of our budget of 615. No GS, GS, GISFIC reimbursements in January 2023, and our GISFIC total remains approximately 740,000. The exact number is $741,657.60. So total GISFIC reimbursements to date, 85 million, 316, thousand and five hundred thirty eight dollars and twenty two cents table three east Bloss six tax revenue up to seventy eight million this period that's a healthy fourteen million dollar increase for the period uh 
total forecasted to date, as you can see, or as I will repeat, 72.2 million. So we're a healthy 5.8 million above plan. Table four shows commitments and expenditures. For East Class Four, we're pretty close to the end. Uh, we're at 565 million. Now that 10,000 increase from last month was due to final expenditures on High Tower Elementary, and we're closing in on closing out that project. And the only other project open is uh, the Towers Culinary Lab, which we believe is effectively on hold based on the CMP uh, considerations. Chart one, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even mention block five. And we've got some technical difficulties there, sorry. There we go. So East Gloss five, expenditures through this period are 72.3 million. Part one, it's class four, it's essentially static. Red curve shows you expenditures to date, and there's that 565 million I mentioned. Excuse me, for class five on chart two, there's a 283.2 million that we mentioned in actual expenditures. And table five shows you your SPLOS four budget totals by phase. We'll skip over to table five, table six, it shows your SPLOS five budget totals by phase. And you can see the breakdown of that 282.2 million. Uh, basically the change from last month was one job moving from planning to design procurement. We still have 10 in construction, eight closed out and 17 completed. Table seven provides you a breakdown of those expenditures by region, as well as your current budget, your current commitment for each of those regions. And that 282, 283.2 million represents approximately 45% of the current budget of 630.3 million. Uh, just a reminder, your region zero district wide bucket includes non-construction expenditures, as well as construction projects that have bundled, that are bundled and represent facilities in multiple regions. And remember, we did include or add an Appendix E uh, last year that provides the detail for those bundled or rolled up projects. Table eight speaks to our cost performance ratio information. You can see the cost controls on, on the screen. Generally speaking, the estimate at completion is what we would estimate the final cost of the project would be. And the cost performance ratio is equal to that EAC divided by the current budget. If, if, if the EAC is less than or equal to the project, Indicator reads green. If the EAC is between the current budget and the budget plus 5%, the indicator reads amber. If the EAC is greater than the budget plus 5%, it shows a red. Uh, generally speaking, all of our SPLOS 4 and SPLOS 5 construction projects, budgets, and cost performance ratios uh, look good. We did have one non-construction project at Red Amber. Uh, I think it was on the, well, I know it was on the report last period, and that's an issue that finance and division of information and instructional technology would have to research and then correct in Munis. Again, table nine shows your cost performance ratio for your SPLOS 4 projects. It 
looks good. Table 10 shows you your cost performance ratio information for your SPLOS 5 projects. And that looks good. So far, so good. And okay, there's the 40235, the, the technology system enhancement project that apparently is needs some attention because it's yellow, which is our flag for amber. As close as I can get to amber, sorry, folks. Tables 11A through 11H provide that project cost ratio data broken down by region. And the projects are listed in project name order inside the regional reports. I neglected to re remind you all that the projects listed on tables nine and 10 are in project number order, but these are easy to find because they're by name. So you know what region you're looking for, you just go to the name. And we'll scroll through each of the regions pretty quickly. By way of reminder, the little header on the region pages matches up with the color coding of the regions on the official district map. And we're looking good there. Everything should look good there because the district managed projects, you recall, are bundled in, are reported in region zero. So all of these construction projects should look good. Table 12 carries your schedule performance measure. And if the current finish date is more than 15 days after the baseline finish date, then the schedule performance measure shows red. Uh, the interesting, the note here, folks, is that there are no new delays reported this period. Every, everything we've talked about in the past has been updated to its current status. And generally speaking, we're making our request of operations and then district leadership to re-baseline the SPLOS 5 schedules. And hopefully that would happen as soon as, uh, let's say, mid-year when SPLOS 5 is expected to be uh, recalibrated for cost. We would look to do schedule re-baselining at that time. So each of the projects that you, so just to remind everyone, table 13 carries the schedule performance measure data for SPLOS 4. Table 14 carries the schedule performance measure data for SPLOS 5. So everything on table 12 in that one line report is detailed here date by date with the performance measure at the far right. So this is effectively a, a detail for the summary that is table 12. And then tables 15A through 15H provide that same schedule performance measure data broken down by region. And then again, these projects are sorted by project name inside each of those regions. Looks like our internet connection's a little spotty. My apologies, but I'll try to work through it. Again, tables 15A through 15H, uh, projects organized by region. Table 16 provides a recap of the projects closed out and completed, broken down by SPLOS 4, 5 and SPLOS 4, and by project number. So good news is that list is growing. And then our appendices, uh, Appendix A provides, oh, let's go there, provides your detailed information for the carryover projects. That's the, those are the projects that this team inherited to manage in the SPLOS 4 cycle. And I know there's about 20 pages of carryover information. Let's pick a good one. So for any particular project, we show the project manager, the status, the overall budget, and then the budget breakdown by phase or work breakdown structure, basically account code. 
some information about the project scope on the right hand side and any notes that might be useful uh, in a current activity follow. It's a lot of data, uh, but we do try to keep it keep it current. So that's Appendix A. Appendix B carries similar information for SPLOS 5. Oh, I'm sorry, there is a total for all your SPLOS 4 carryover information. Okay. Appendix B provides that detailed information for SPLOS 5 projects. One note, you may see a project such as athletic field fencing that was broken down into sub projects to represent the athletic field fencing at each of the various high schools. So you'll see a duplicate of the lines for general contractor on the budget report. And as I mentioned previously, you can always go to Appendix E to see a detailed line for that particular facility. For that particular project. So this should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 is correct. Actually, 19 is correct. So that's detailed information for Appendix B. Appendix C carries your detailed funding information, basically plan versus actual. Let's get there. And it's really at a funding source level, for example, I guess the best way to say it. So sales tax funding, bond funding, any GA, GA DOE reimbursements, and then total funding. And we track that from the first month in the SPLOS 5 collection cycle through to the last month, which was July 2022. And there's your 616.8 million that we mentioned earlier. Table, I'm sorry, Appendix D provides basically a summary of that funding information. So it's combined funding plan actually received in the ratio of our plan to actual, along with the commits, commitments and the expenditures. Of course, our goal is to ensure that we have enough funding to cover all of our commitments, which in that turn will then cover all of our expenditures. Appendix E is that roll-up report I mentioned, uh, takes projects that are bundled and quote, explodes them so you can see the detail. Uh, for example, we mentioned the fence project. Here are the explosion or the breakout of that fence installation for various facilities. Again, this is organized by region. So that the total for a given line in region zero will be exploded into the various regions on this report. Oh, and that's pretty much our, our standard report. Um, Madam Chair, that concludes my formal remarks. I'm happy to take questions. Oh, in fact, we do have a couple photos I wanted to share, if you don't mind. Um, people have been interested in our Druid Hills High School baseball project. That Druid Hills High School team plays its games at the middle school. And so this project is improving the, basically replacing the field and the facilities at Druid Hills Middle School on behalf of the high school. What you see here is the visitors dugout under construction in the foreground. And there's your new press box in the background. And equally important, um, this field is completely resod and really weather has been our enemy for the last couple of months. Well, February, yeah, at least the last two months solid. So 
we've got to give the sod a chance to take. Uh, but we're thinking it'll end up with pretty good insulation. The, the experts, the builder and their landscaping people think it might be end of March and we should be in pretty good shape with the new sod. That concludes my formal remarks. Kathy, I'm happy to take questions. All right, thank you very much, Mel. Um, anyone on the committee have any questions for Mel in regards to the MSR report? Okay, um, Mel, I actually had one question and thank you so much for, I, I overlooked the executive summary yesterday. So, um, yeah, I, no worries. Thank you for your patience. Um, usually I try to get that out uh, by the 15th of each month. We had a few things going on last week. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Mm -hmm. um, so just to let the committee know that uh, Mel does share an executive summary of what he's going to present or the, and help me out, Mel, um, items that are, Of interest, I guess. Yes. Um, just highlights of the MSR report so that we don't have to go the, through the entire um, report. He just highlights some things. So I just wanted to, if you don't mind, Mel, um, just because it was highlighted in the email that was sent that the security vestibule group A, which includes um, Bob Mathis Elementary, Cedar Grove Elementary, Columbia Elementary, ISC or Midway, Rainbow Elementary, Stevenson Middle, Stone Mountain High School and Wadsworth Middle, excuse me, Wadsworth Magnet. They're at 90% completion and anticipation of everything being completed by the end of this month. Is that correct? All but one possibly end of February. Okay. End of March or Group B. I can display the executive summary, Kathy, if you would like me to. Um, it's not necessary. Okay. But I, they, there was a question um, that was emailed to to us from the community. I wanted to make sure that um, that was called out. That um, the security vestibules are being completed and um, the question was about uh, them not being completed in January, 2023, but it sounds like, you know, there may have been some delay and now they they should be on track to at least uh, group A will be completed by the end of this month. And then group B will be completed by the end of next month. So they're and at 90% completion. I think that's a great, um, great place to be. So. Just wanted to call that out, number one. And then also to let everyone know on the committee that we do get an executive summary, myself and Daniel, uh, prior to the meeting. Uh, any questions from anybody on the committee? All right, hearing none, back to the agenda. And we are at the number eight facilities maintenance report. Yep, if um, Mel, if you'll stop sharing, I need to share my screen. Yes, sir. So hold on just a moment. So just um, can everyone see the um, the total work orders screen. Yes, yes sir. All right. So um, just a, a few uh, a business items before. Okay. So Barry was having trouble. I uh, put a message in there for you, Richard, and but she just texted and said she just became a panelist. So um, we were having issues and devising ways to uh, for me to share screenshots while she talked about it, but. Um, Hopefully we won't have to do that. But so uh, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to go over the uh, work orders. Uh, this uh, our uh, uh, dashboard was updated 
uh, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, uh, through, as you see here, this is the total work orders as of February 2nd. Uh, you can see um, that there are actually 5,342 that have been complete, uh, 2,167 that are in progress, and 1,441 that uh, have been approved. And as you see down here, the approved is that has been accepted as a work order or it's been accepted, a work order has been created, and the work order is awaiting assignment to a technician. Um, so the, those are the total. Uh, we can go through and look at the, the various regions here. And if, if y'all need, if anyone needs um, a direction and how to get to this, just let me know. I've gone over it a, a couple of times. But the uh, for Region 1, total closed 1,437. Uh, 846 that are in progress, and one that is um, that was a uh, one that's approved that hasn't been assigned yet, um, and not hiding anything. Uh, region two, we have uh, 1144 completed, with 618 that are in progress, uh, but we have uh, 757 that need to be assigned to tax so those, those can be taken care of. Um, one thing I wanted to show, and I'll just, I'll just pick number three. If you go in and um, uh, this is something I just learned. If you right click on any one of these, you can see it as a table. So you can see uh, each one of the regions. And there was even, um, there was some more information that could be shown as well on those. No, oh, that's not. Not helpful. Uh, one thing that you can do is you can go up here to um, the see more detail. You can look at, um, well, you can look at all of them, but you can pick on a particular region. You can see the detail for that, and you can see uh, how many are approved in progress and complete, and the the uh, number that are either less than 30 days, 30 to 60, 60 to 90, a 90 to 20, and over 120. Uh, at the top, you can see the total work orders, the total open, the total close, uh, total approved and in progress and new. So uh, with definitions of all of that at the bottom. Um, these, uh, these are items that we're working on. I'll go through the others. Uh, 482 that are closed out of 687 with uh, 23 that are in progress and 101 that need to be um, that need to be assigned. Uh, I don't uh, I'm not ever able to actually click on what is uh, considered new this uh, gray here because it is uh, such a a, uh, a small number they come in they're reviewed. Uh, and either um, approved as a work order or it's, um, you know, the, the school, um, uh, we assist the school with their uh, crew to uh, be able to do whatever the work order is. And because in the past, we've gotten things like, uh, you know, they need new toilet seats or things like that. Uh, that is something that's more of a, a school item, not, a, not really a, a maintenance item. Uh, region 4. Uh, 366, I'm sorry, 366 uh, items with um, 175 closed, 190 that are um, uh, in progress, and a mystery one, because that 190 and, and the 175 is actually 365. I'm not, I guess that one it must be a new item that I can't quite click on. It's fairly small. Region 5, uh, 1,561 that are complete, 290 in progress, and 154 uh, that need to be um, that need to be assigned. Uh, region 6, 612, and you can see the numbers here. So we are um, 
we're work, always working on uh, getting these complete and uh, improving uh, our numbers uh, so that we can um, you know, provide the best facility we can. Are there any um, any questions, any particular region you want to dive into um, as far as the detail? Now, there's not a lot. Um, There's not a lot that you can see as far as detail on any particular school, uh, other than the the days that are um, uh, that the particular work order has been in progress. Any questions? Yeah, Daniel was kind enough to drop the um, the website. The link to the website in in our chat. Okay. So, yeah. Anybody... It's, um, again, I'll I'll go through it. It's uh, if you go to go to our main page. Oh. All right. Well. All right. Go to our main page. Go to data dashboards and then go to operations. And you can go look at all of the others as well, graduation rates, et cetera. But uh, this is ours, operations. And if there are no questions, that is it. And we can. Um, move on to Barry, who I see is there. Now, there are two items in the chat. So, okay, good. All right. All right, thanks, Richard. Um, are there any any questions in regards to the uh, facilities management report? Um, just one quick comment. Somebody didn't spell status right. That is oh, crazy. did they not? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I uh, see that, right. Was that on, uh, so I'm interested. Yep, it is on every one of them. We'll get that corrected. All righty. Um, let's see. Don't have the agenda. Hold on, give me one second so I can get the agenda. I hope. Um, Mel, thank you, Mel. Um, let's see. We're at now uh, the Munis work order system, Barry. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm going to share my screen. I think you have to stop sharing, Mel. Apologies, my response time is bad. I think my connection's bad, so please bear with me. My apologies. I believe I released control, Barry. Tell me if it looks okay on your end. Well, it'll let me share a window. I'll take that. Okay. All right. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Do you see what looks like the work order system? Work orders landing page. All right. Wonderful. All right. So when last we were visiting a couple of months ago, we were talking about the work order system and how it works. The information that Richard just reviewed with you is the aggregation of this information. I pulled the files together yesterday. Uh, the reports are made as of the third Friday of every month. They were submitted yesterday to update the data through the 17th. Uh, it'll be through the 20th because of the holiday. So the work order system, when we went over it before, we talked about how does the system work? 
So generally speaking, users at the schools come in, they get this page, which is where they create requisitions, they fill in the information, and when they hit the save button, then they get a service request created. The service request is then, it shows up in this approval block so that the, um, so that the request for the work to be done can be approved. Uh, I don't have the ability to see that screen. Can you now see something that looks like an approval screen? You're back on the original page. Okay, do you see something that says approvals in the middle? No. Uh, uh, your main section is filtered work orders. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was hoping I could manage to get it to let me show you uh, to keep flipping back and forth between a Word document and the screen. Well, if that fails, if this approval block is clicked. Now, um, you know what, um, Barry, under filter work orders, I think I can see approved, in progress, new, on hold, work completed, and I can't see that last one. Hmm. Okay, uh, when you click on the approvals, if you had any out there, they would display here. I have a screenshot on the Word document, but I lack the skill to be able to make it display. Mm -hmm. um, but still, so you have your service request, you put the service request in, it then shows up so that it can be looked at by anyone. And over here, we see the work order number that was assigned after it was approved. This work order number can then be seen because if you click on your work orders, for instance, we're looking at 13119 that is at Southwest DeKalb, it's this one here. This landing page has been created for all of the users so that requesting departments like the schools or servicing departments like the uh, regional managers or someone looking for a specific activity like HVAC or uh, audio visual can pull up just their items or what the status of it is or even who it was assigned to. So we have the ability to filter here what any given person sees. This is showing us HVAC that's approved in process of any status at all within maintenance region five. So I pulled out this one here and when I click on the hyperlink, it takes me to this work order in the system. From this, from this work order, the managers can look and see what's going on. They can change who it's been assigned to. Right now it was assigned to Larry Henderson. He completed it on February the 22nd. He completed it today. And then, uh, what's the other one I wanted? Then you can also go and they will have within these approvals, there is a second type of approval, which is the work order closes. So once a person has closed a work order, once a technician has closed a work order, it enters a queue for approval for work order close. I want to try again to bring up the Word document that I had because I really need you all to be able to see those screenshots. Let me see if I do a new share, if it will let me show you that document instead. No, it just simply won't. Are you all still seeing the uh, system? Are you all still seeing a share of the work order system? Nope, we see you. Yes. No. I'm very sorry about that. It's it's okay. Zoom can be a little tricky when if you have uh, multiple monitors and multiple displays, it can be a I little I shut tricky. them all down to one. I was trying mm -hmm. really hard to protect myself from that. Uh, when I go to try to share anything with you, it's simply grayed out, but I had to come in through the browser this time. Uh, I, Richard, 
Let me stop. I don't believe I'm sharing. Will you share that document that I sent you? Thank you. Oh. Thank you. All right, if you would maximize that Word document and to a single page so they can see the screens easier. If you're able, sorry to put you on the spot, Richard. What you see here on the left in this screen where it says service requesters, We can just work from this, it'll be all right, Richard. Thank you so much for bringing it up. So what you see on the left side here where it says service requesters, this is the screen that they initially see. Then the second screen down is where they input the service request. So regional managers are seeing the approvals of what you see in that second screenshot, which is the request where a requisition is put in. When they pull it up, they see a screen like this approvals block where it says that it is a service request approval type or an SRA. When they click on it, it opens it up so that they can see. Can you scroll up just a little, Richard, to the top, to the page above it? Mm. Uh, so anything that they have put in in this description field will show up. Scroll down again, hon. Will show up on the tab to the left and tell them what it is that is being requested. This lets them approve it or not. All right, scroll down to the next page. Once it's been approved, an email goes out to the requester telling them that the service request was approved. This commentary is what it tells you. It tells them their service request number. It tells them that it was uh, that it was approved and converted into a work order. And it tells them wor what work order number it is. So they're able to see the work order numbers when the work order is created on that same landing page that you saw on my screen. Uh, uh, so then I think these pages are working left to right. Let me see if I can get this. Uh, to just do it one page at a time. Hey, Richard. Yes. Richard put a uh, dropped a, some information in the chat. He said if you zoom in, it'll it should turn into one page. All right. Um, yeah. Oh, about one page. That's mm -hmm. it. No. One page. That's there it. Go. You're right. Now you can zoom. Control and then down in the bottom right hand corner where there's the plus and minus and you're at 76%, increase that until it makes it use up the screen. There. Is that good or a little bit bigger? Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. Okay. okay, so scroll back up a little bit. So once it's been approved right there, right? So this is what this is what they actually the, I think it's uh, one screen up where you can see what there is that you're being asked to approve right here. So on this screen, this is what the, re the managers actually see. When they click on SRA Hazmat, what they see is this request from a specific school, Bob Mathis in region five to do the task described at the bottom. That's when they then choose what they wanna do from those choices on the bottom left, approve, reject, forward or hold. Scroll down, please. All right, so at this point, they can then make a comment about it and then they submit it. If they wanna reject it, they can reject it. That will also send a note back to the school. Sometimes the schools ask them to clean limbs out of the yard and it would be something that they could probably handle. Uh, scroll down, please. So once it's been approved, the operations staff creates a work order from the service request. They have a screen that they go to where they select a specific uh, approved work order and they turn, uh, uh, excuse me, an approved service request and they turn it into a work order. It is as simple as selecting that line and clicking quick convert, the button on the top right that's somewhat purple colored. Then 
after that, the uh, if you scroll down a little bit, then it they repeat that and they convert all of the items that they have. Once the work orders have been created, it sends an email to the requester that tells them, hey, your service request was turned into a work order and it tells them what work order number it was. If you'll scroll down a little more, that went to the requester. But a message also goes, so this is exactly what a requester sees. This is a copy of one of them. Then if you would scroll down again, I'm looking for the message that goes to the Okay, so, oh, sorry, excuse me. At this point, a, the work order is assigned by a regional manager to one of his technicians. So he goes in, navigates to field work, and then scroll down some more, Richard, finds his work order, and he assigns it to the person that, that he uh, wants to handle that task. Keep scrolling. So this is how he does it. He actually goes in and he drops down the assigned to and he can choose whether to put it to an employee or a vendor. Sometimes we assign more complicated tasks to vendors and the vendors are in the list to assign to as well. Scroll down, please. So this one chose the assign block and then you drop it down and you can see for things like locksmith, it's William Alphabet. You start typing it in, it brings up the names of the people you select the person you want to assign it to, keep scrolling, and then the work order is assigned. Once the work order is assigned, it triggers an email to the tech. So the technician receives this email on his handheld and it tells him work order number X for some given location was assigned to you on the date it was assigned. The work order is to be done and then it tells you the activity that was selected by the requester and then it tells them everything that the requester put in the description block about what the issue was. So they now know what they need to do and where it needs to be done. This, is, uh, this comes out on their um, district cell phones so that if they're in the process of working at a location or they're near it or it's an emergency, they're immediately aware of it without someone even having to call them. The minute it's assigned, they're advised. Scroll down, please. This is what the technician sees on his handheld. He has this little hard hat with a gear beard and that's the field sheet application produced by the Munis system. Once he clicks on that, please scroll down. He sees the screen on the left here that says field sheet because that thing that looks like a valve or a lifter in your engine, the, the, the microphone thing in the middle is a filter. And that will allow him to filter for other people that he works with. If he wants to look at a work order that someone else has done, it will let him filter to his own. It will let him filter based on whether it's open or closed. So he can look up something from the past, but he sees his work orders. In this case, the first one is number 556, electrical repair. I clicked on it and that's the screen you see on the right. That is work order number 556, and it says electric repair, light on the side of the gym is out, and the contact was Ed Morton. Uh, that is his regional, the regional manager handling that. Scroll down, please. Then this just tells you what kind of filters he has available, and he can update the status of the work order, and when he chooses to update the status, then he clicks update status. His next choice is to hold the work, complete the work or cancel it. When he clicks complete the work, it then creates another work order into the system. But he has the ability to upload photographs, to put in comments, to put in any other information that he would like to about that task. Uh, and then once he selects to close it, that it's completed, then it goes to the regional manager to be closed. So work order close again shows up in that block on the approvals where it will say, okay, there's something that needs to be approved. And then scroll down if you would. This one just has a screenshot of the SRA again because I didn't have a WOC to put in there, but a work order close would look just like this. 
you see on the third uh, item down on the approvals on the left hand side, there is a WOC. If that one were clicked, it would open up on the right hand side and give you information that looks like what you see in this screenshot of an SRA, but it would be for the work order closed and it would tell you when it was created, what the issue was, what the activity was, uh, who resolved it, where it was located, and any comments that were submitted by the technician at the time that he closed it. At this point, the regional manager needs to select one of these options at the bottom of the screen to approve it or to, um, or to reject the close. He wouldn't have all of these choices on a WOC. They are sensitive to the type of approval, but he does have choices there. And once he approves it, then the work order is set to a closed status. And those are the things which are aggregated to create the statistics that you just uh, heard from Richard. Uh, scroll down, I think I didn't put anything else there that's particularly material other than he can also add comments at the time that he closes it. And then uh, scroll down a slight bit more. The last thing is that closure by the regional manager triggers an email to the requester telling them that the work order has been closed. So they would be able to go and determine if the sink was affixed to the wall to their satisfaction, um, if the water fountain was working properly, uh, and then follow up. Are there any questions? Um, one quick question, Barry. So yes, let's say, for instance, um, the work order has been completed, it's been reviewed by, you know, the person's um, leader or whoever reviews it. But then um, the, the actual school is like, no, it, it either it's fixed temporarily and it needs to be redone. So they need to come back. Can they reopen that same work order or do they have to go through the process all over again? I have not seen where the work orders reopen, but that's a question I have outstanding from a, uh, a webinar that Munis did last week. I had about six questions to them about features that I would implement if I found them. And that's one of the ones on my list. Very good. <laughs> um, I would like to be able to reopen a work order, but I don't see a feature that allows me to do that. So I think that it probably would have to be reopened, but I've written procedures for how each of these steps are done. There are desktop procedures for requesters, for regional managers, for technicians. Everyone has their desktop procedures. So my plan will be to update those procedures and tell them to put their previous service request or work order number in there in the description if they have to start another one so that I have something I can link to uh, to be able to go backwards and see previous work orders. Hey, is, is this system managing preventative maintenance as well, recurring work orders? It can be set up to do that. Um, we're going over to see Cobb County on March the 1st. They implemented it about three years ago, and I believe they are using it for preventive maintenance. When we first started this, or when I first started looking at this system to continue to evolve it, it, it seemed to be set up to move in the direction of preventive maintenance, but I don't think we had a good handle on what exact things we would like to list as maintenance. And so what was happening is somebody would try to create an activity called repair doorknob and somebody else would create one that says door hinge is sticking and someone else would create one that says you know another problem and they were all really the same thing my doorknob isn't working and so it was reduced to the basics of well carpentry will handle it whatever it is so i think that as it comes to filters and things like that we will be evolving it to preventive maintenance it absolutely will do that but right now it isn't configured that way. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Kevin, you've been quiet. Sabrina, Sarah. 
No questions. This has actually been very helpful to see how the work order process <clears throat> works at the level of the school. And if the time comes that you all would like to actually work through some work orders, like create one, there is a test system and we could create a time frame and go through and push transactions all the way through the entire system where we're not creating uh, garbage data in production. But we could go into a test system if, it, if there comes a time that you actually want to see how it works. So just know that's an option you have. That might be helpful too. Thank you very much, Barry. Any questions for Barry? All right, thank you so much, Barry, again, for coming back and, and presenting again. Yes, ma'am, anytime. Remember you said that, it's being recorded. <laughs> um, let's see, we are now at item number nine, new business. Um, I didn't see any notifications of upcoming community meetings and other events. There are none. Correct, correct. Yeah, there okay. are none. Okay, okay awesome. Um, and B, fill one, one open position to replace Kim Creighton. Um, Ms. Creighton. Ms. Creighton has submitted her resignation as of February 28th, and I do not see her on, unfortunately. So... Her last meeting was uh, last month. Um, and just wanted the minutes to reflect accommodations to Ms. Creighton for her service to uh, DeKalb County. Um, I'm sorry, excuse me, the East Bluff Advisory Committee. We do appreciate her her diligence and her, her leadership and all of, all of her experience that she shared with us on, during her time here with uh, the committee. So having said that, we will, we haven't determined how we're going to fill the position. Is that correct, Richard? Whether we're oh, going to we, use um, the current list or yeah, are we going I, to uh, advertise? I, I actually think we can uh, use the current list. Uh, there are about a half dozen um, uh, folks that had expressed interest with uh, fairly high scores. Uh, you know, when we did our, our uh, self-reporting and interviews, uh, Combination had a pretty high score. Uh, so we'll be reaching out. Uh, and of course, I'll talk with you and Daniel first, but there's one or two that we, we can reach out to um, that will also help to spread the uh, number of board or the number of committee members uh, throughout the school district. Okay. But I, I think we can uh, at least initially reach out to these folks and uh, see if they are still interested. And then if we had to do another uh, re-advertisement. I hope not, but yeah. okay. All right. Anybody have any questions in regards to uh, item number 9B? All righty. Let's move right into 9C. Election of chair and vice chair. Um, Richard, uh, I didn't get any emails. I don't know if you did or if we need to just open up the floor for nominations. Uh, I did not get any emails either um, about this or any nominations. So probably just need to uh, open the floor up. Okay. The floor is open for the position of vice chair. And this is for a one year, uh, I believe that's it correct, is. isn't it, Kathy? A one year commitment it for is. vice chair and chair. It is, but what we're going to do, uh, Richard, if you don't mind. We'll start with the vice chair and then yeah. we'll move to the chair. Yeah. Okay, any nominations? Did somebody come off from mute? I did, Lisa. Okay. I nominate let Daniel continue as vice chair. Daniel, do you accept the nom the nomination? 
I humbly accept. All right. Are there any other nominations? No, I was going to throw a second if you needed one. <laughs> nope, don't need a second. But thank you, Derek. Okay. Um, all right, if there are no objections, can we by uh, unanimous consent uh, close the nominations on Daniel Walker as the vice chair, if there are no objections? All right, hearing none, the office of vice chair is closed on the, the one, name submitted and that would be Daniel Walker. All right. So the nominations for chair are now open. Nominations for chair are now open. Okay, I'm gonna move this along. Kathy, I nominate you. Well, thank you, Derek. I, I do accept that nomination. Are there any other nominations for chair? All right. Uh, can we by unanimous consent, if there are no objections, close the nominations on the one name submitted, Kathy Blakeney for chair, if there are no objections. Hearing none, um, nominations are now closed on the name submitted, Kathy Blakeney for chair and uh, Daniel and I will serve another year as chair and vice chair. Thank you so much, um, fellow advisory committee members. Yes, thank you so much for your confidence. Uh, number 10A, unfinished business, send photo and bio to update the website. And I'm going to stop right there. As the, that was due to Monica on the 10th. And did every, Monica, did, did we get all of them? I know there were two that were outstanding. I remember we got one in. Did we get all of the uh, bio and photos? Um, I got the majority, yes. The ones that I received, I have already submitted a help ticket to have them um, updated and posted to the site. I think there were only maybe one person that had not submitted. If you did not submit, please submit to me as soon as possible. So yeah, actually it'd be great if you could do it by this Friday uh, so we could go ahead and get that wrapped up. Okay, um, and that, I think the one person may be me, so I'm sorry. Uh, I, need, I needed to update my photo and update a whole bunch of information has changed okay. for me. Um, all right. All right, so um, now we need to discuss badges do we really need the badges? Yeah, we... that was one thing that um, Monica and I were talking about. And I think, Monica, had you talked with somebody at Public Safety about that? Or did I need to talk with Chief Gober? Um, uh, you and I need to have an extended conversation because it's not going to be that simple. Um, just providing an ID badge. There's a process. And I have been in touch with public safety um, every day. I, I have spoke with them today, but because the East Floss Advisory Committee members are considered volunteers, uh, their system show no um, tracking of background check and fingerprinting before they will provide an ID badge. And you and I have to have a separate conversation about the cost. So I'll have to talk with you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I know I did a, a background check and a fingerprint because I had to go down to Memorial Drive. Okay. So yeah. did I. If it was more than five years ago, it's, it's not considered updated. Yeah. So let us get the um, 
let us find out exactly from because that that was kind of a question I had, Kathy, that I wanted to ask Chief because I mean, what is the what is the purpose of the um, ID? I mean, y'all aren't typically going into to schools unless you're, you know, with us uh, at some of the you know we've had some of the meetings at some of the new schools. So that's something I was going to talk with uh, Chief Gober about. Uh, you know, until uh, I mean, y'all were coming in to this building, but again, it was uh, typically escorted. We were always here uh, until the last person left. So uh, I just need to check in with him and and see um, see what the the need is. Okay. Well, you know, maybe that's a good well. No, we'll have to wait until announcement. Um, can we uh, move on to 11 collection of recommendations yep. for a meeting? I didn't hear any other than um, we need to, if you haven't submitted your bio and your photo, uh, that needs to be submitted by this Friday. And we'll probably have to put the badge badge information back on our agenda as unfinished business for next month. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we can move right into announcements. Any announcements? Any announcements? All right. So I, I actually do have, and maybe I should have put myself down as an agenda item. I did meet with the superintendent on the first, and we had a very good meeting. Uh, we have uh, decided that we're going to meet quarterly, and our next meeting will be, I think, May 1st. Um, Let's see, some of the items that I wanted to ask about, I mean, to kind of let you know that we talked about um, was one particular item, and that was um, probably two years after the SLOS Advisory Committee was formed, two or three years, we had decided to have one member attend the Board of Education meeting. Um, and I think we, the superintendent and I just have agreed that that's something that we probably need to um, revitalize again, that we have at least one or two members attend the Board of Education meeting. And I know everybody works and you have, you know, you have lives, <clears throat> um, you have personal lives and you have uh, professional lives. Um, so that's why it's spread amongst all 12 members. So if you can attend, we can either set up a schedule for all of us to attend, you know, all of us to attend a meeting, or if someone would like to volunteer to attend the meeting, that will be great. Just let me know how you want to manage that. Hey Kathy, sorry, this is mm -hmm. Kathy. So, so mm -hmm. is is this for for the attendance? Is, would that be virtual or in person? Um, I'm not sure. How how do how do they do the board of education meetings now? I thought they were in person. Yeah, they're in person. They they live stream them too. I'm on the website right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. I, well, the whole premise behind uh, having the one of the East Blocks Advisory Committee members attending the board board meeting is so that number one, they'll know that that we actually do exist. We're not a figment of the Cap County school system's imagination. That we we do exist, and we're very interested in in the business of the school system. 
So I would I would highly encourage, thank you, Richard. Um, I would highly encourage if you can do it in person to do it in person. But if you know if you need to do the live stream, then we all can do the live stream. Actually, Madam Chair, uh, we ju mm -hmm. just got a note in the chat that uh, attendance of the board meetings is live. So, uh, just watching it on the um, live stream isn't considered attendance. Yeah, yeah, that's what I kind of thought. That is just to see what's going on, but it is they they need to see our presence. So um, let me know if you if you can attend or you would like to be our representative to attend each meeting. Um, Madam Chair, I'll volunteer to attend at least one meeting. I need to check my schedule to see uh, which meeting or meetings I can attend and I'll let you know. Okay, that sounds good, Daniel. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'd be willing to support that also. Um, However, I can work that out with Dang or whatever the schedule would participate, but I would be willing to support it. Okay, well, how about this? If if someone can attend the March meeting, that will be great. I will let the superintendent know who is going to attend. Um, Tommy, you came off of mute. Did you want to? I, I was just going to add in that I was willing to go into that rotation as well. Okay, awesome. This is Lisa Wright, me also. I think it would be helpful. I guess if we had a calendar of the meetings and then we could divvy it up, probably more meaningful. Okay. Well, you know what? So that's a great idea, Lisa. Let's do that for next month. Sabrina. Okay. Thank you, Sabrina. And is that the is that the yeah, live stream link? No, that's all the upcoming meeting dates. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Well. Yeah, they're scheduled out <clears throat> through the beginning of January 2024. So I think between all of us, we should be able to get at least one member at of the committee. Member. Yep. I like that. Thank you. So if we're talking about board meetings <laughs> and not the work session. Sorry. Hey, the link I just posted, please ignore. <laughs> I was in Indiana. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, yeah, that's, that's for another... Yeah. I've been sitting at my computer too long. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, we, we that. need for you to get up. <laughs> no worries. Hang on. Let's see. This has been going on too long. Okay. That's the link to the Board of Education. Let me uh, let's see. Well, you know what? Um, is that... Does anyone know what time the meetings are? It says all day on this calendar, but I know that's not right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Unfortunately. Oh. Yeah. Um, Richard, do you know what time the board meetings? Because I know it says executive session starts at 1130. And then the work um, session starts, and then 545 community input, in person, and virtual, and then the business meeting starts. Typically, the um, the work sessions, the part that we go to, start between one and one thirty, maybe two o'clock. That's when the different um, divisions do their presentations. You know, the HR report, the finance report. This is when uh, Mr. Hofstetter gets up and presents. Uh, the operations items, um, and that can, depending on what is going on in executive session, that can be anywhere from one to two o'clock. That's when that starts. Okay. All right, so we will come up with a calendar. And um, if there's a particular board meeting that you like to, a particular month that you like to attend the board meeting, um, just let us know next month. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. That's fair. And anybody else who wants to get in the rotation, then we can um, slide you in as well. 
And I know we have Robert's not on, so he may be able to attend as well. Um, let's see. Any other announcements? Oh, one other thing. We also needed to discuss um, whether we want to remain virtual until the fall or do we want to go back to in-person? I prefer to remain virtual. I second that emotion. That, that was not a, that was a, a comment. I <laughs> move, I move that we keep these meetings virtual. I agree, hundred percent. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm good with that. I, I wholeheartedly agree, because trying to get to um, damn, I forgot where we where we meet over there with Richard and Sam Moss. Moss. Sam, Sam Moss. Moss. Sam right. Moss. Yeah, it's been it's been that long. <laughs> it, it has been. It's been two years. Three. Yeah, least. it's been now. It's been three years almost. Three years. I've yeah. only ever been on this committee as as they have been virtual meetings, and if they were not virtual meetings, it would be very difficult for me to serve on the committee because I have school age children in a DeKalb County school, and to get them home and then get anywhere else in Atlanta to be somewhere for a six o'clock meeting would be very challenging. So yeah, I I agree with you, Sarah. I don't have school age children, but I agree. Um, so and we will remain. And, when I, leave, and uh -huh. when I leave here, it's it's uh, much easier traffic than when I try to. To leave at record time so i'm good with it as well yeah okay so we will remain virtual and we'll look at it again in the fall if that if that's okay um any other announcements i have an announcement that's uh kind of personal but kind of business related as well um my daughter is a sophomore at Chambly High School, but she's also a nationally recognized uh, STEM advocate for girls and minorities. And tonight she'll be on Nickelodeon. Um, Nick News followed her to her elementary school, which is Data Academy. Um, and she went back to her school to do science experiments and to get the kids educated in STEM. So she has a platform where she helps uh, minorities and young women get excited about STEM and they filmed her for a whole day at date. So if you have kids, it may be too late. That was coming on at seven o'clock. I think it may come on again, but it's a great chance to see the Cab County schools uh, kind of in the national spotlight. Very cool. Temple Excellent. Congratulations. Thank that you. is amazing. Yeah, thank you. Her name is Temple Lester. You can feel free to Google her. She's kind of all over. She uh she spoke at Wadsworth last month. Um, she's a she went to date then to Wadsworth and now she's at Assembly. So she's definitely at the Cab County School uh, product. But again, she is nationally recognized. So um, I'm sure that video will be floating around as well. But if you have kids, uh, encourage them to look at Nick News, Nickelodeon, and again, you'll see the Cab County School System. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for sharing that, Tommy. We Thank do you. appreciate that, and we we do like to hear that the Cap County uh, school system, the investments that we're we're making in the time that we're putting in are um, producing good citizens. So that's great. When, when I get a, a link to the actual video segment, I'll send it out to the group. I'm sure it'd be something you guys want to take a look at um, and share. But thank you. Okay. And tell me, make sure uh, you capture the email that's in the chat. Okay. Please. Will do. Thank you. Okay. Um, anything, any other announcements? All right. So our next meeting is March 22nd, 2023 at six o'clock. Um, hope to see everybody there. Um, if not, if you would please let myself or Daniel Richard or Monica know, we would appreciate it. Um, and everyone have a wonderful rest of the day. And it is now 729 and our meeting is now adjourned. Mm -hmm.